So a lot of people are really scared of sewing buttonholes. So you get to the very end of your project, you can't wait to try it on, but first ugh, you have to sew buttonholes. So this can make even the most seasoned seamstress freeze. And Haley and I are gonna help you out today. So by the end of this video, you'll have five tricks in your basket so you'll never be tripped up by buttonholes again. First, we'll show you some places where you might encounter tricky buttonholes. Then we'll share three must-have notions to keep in your stash to sew buttonholes. And then we'll show you four types of buttonholes you might not know about. Finally, we'll share the number one thing you can do to make your buttonholes look great. Haley, where are some places where you might encounter tricky buttonholes? So some of the places you might see trickier buttonholes is going to have a lot to do with your fabric normally. Mm. Um, so if you have something that is particularly heavyweight, something particularly lightweight, something that's slippery, or if your fabric has any kind of stretch in it, mm. whether that is a woven that has some stretch or a knit, those can be trickier buttonholes. And then sometimes you just have something that is tricky for no particular reason at all. <laughs> It's just tricky. It's just tricky, just because. <laughs> All right, so what are some tricks that people can use to sew buttonholes? So there is a handful of tricks that I am going to offer you in this video that can be in your proverbial trick basket um, that can help you to navigate when you encounter one of these trickier buttonholes so you can troubleshoot that. All right, well, let's see them. Tearaway stabilizer is like my buttonhole secret weapon. I swear that it helps with pretty much any issue that you have, whether you're sewing with fabric that's really slippery, fabric that's really stretchy, if you're sewing through a single layer, um, or your fabric is really thin and your feed dogs just don't have anything to grab onto, that's where tearaway stabilizer or also tissue paper, if you're in a jam, you can use tissue paper, where these really come in handy. Basically, it's going to stabilize your buttonhole as you sew, and it's gonna give your feed dog something to hold onto. So it's really, really helpful. Here's how it works. Basically, you're gonna take your tearaway stabilizer and cut off a little square that's gonna be a bit bigger than the buttonhole that you're sewing slap it onto the wrong side of your fabric and sew your buttonhole just like normal. Once you're done, you can just tear it away and you have a beautiful buttonhole. Buttonhole gimps are another great way to add stability to a buttonhole. You might be thinking, oh, what is a buttonhole gimp? That sounds weird. It is basically a nice thick thread um, that you could either use to hand sew buttonholes or you can use it to add stability to machine made buttonholes. You will attach the buttonhole gimp to your buttonhole foot and your machine will sew, will bar tack and then sew over that gimp. And basically it's gonna add some stability and make your buttonholes a lot nicer. I think this is a great touch on more tailored things, can give you a really professional look. And you can also use it in places like with knits if you're getting a lot of stretching, but um, the tearaway stabilizer just isn't doing it for you. Let me show you how to use a buttonhole gimp. The first thing that you're gonna need to sew a buttonhole with a gimp is obviously your gimp thread. This is my gimp thread. It's a nice sturdy thread and I am going to hook it on to the back of my buttonhole presser foot. Every machine is a little bit different, but you should have some little prongs sticking out the back of your presser foot that you can fix this to and kind of loop it around. On my machine, it is this little protrusion right there. I'm gonna take my gimp, I have it doubled up into a loop like so, and I'm gonna take that loop and I'm gonna hook it onto my presser foot and kind of hold that taut while I position my fabric underneath my presser foot. And you'll just align your fabric or your garment just like any other buttonhole that you're sewing set up to sew the correct size, and then lower your presser foot. And on the front of my presser foot, you can see that I have these little ridges here. There's kind of a central one on my foot, and then two slots 
to either side and I'm just going to make sure that my thread is fitting into those slots and I'm just going to apply a little bit of upward pressure to make sure that's taut. Now we are going to sew our buttonhole. Once you're done sewing your buttonhole, you should be left with something that looks like this. You have your little loop sticking out of the top and then these two tails. This guy is just the thread from my sewing of the buttonhole. You're gonna tug on these threads to pull that loop through and snug up against that bar tack at the top of the buttonhole. So, Sometimes you'll pull on them and maybe one of them will give you a little resistance. Just check the other one. In this case, this one's pulling just fine. I'm gonna pull it through until it's hidden underneath that bar tack. Then you'll wanna use something really sharp here and trim those guys away and then trim any excess. And that is your finished buttonhole using a gimp to add stability. It's really, really easy to do, and it only adds an extra step or two, but it has a great impact. Have you ever sewn a perfectly beautiful buttonhole and then ruined it by slicing right through your stitching? It can be so frustrating, and that is where one of my favorite buttonhole tools comes into play. A buttonhole punch is a little chisel that you can use to punch a hole right in the center of your buttonhole and it can give you a really precise clean cut in the middle of your buttonhole it's also very satisfying to do if you are a person that doesn't like to buy a bunch of extra kind of tools for um, your sewing needs another tip could be to put a pin at either end of your buttonhole and then you can use either really small sharp shears or your seam ripper to just slice through and your pins will act as kind of like bumpers uh, to stop you from going through your bar tack at either end. Something else that can really make or break your buttonholes is selecting the right type of buttonhole for the job. There are your classic buttonholes. A classic buttonhole is like a standard rectangular buttonhole. You see it on all of your ready to wear garments. This is most ideal for medium weight woven garments. If you are working with a slightly lighter weight fabric, um, you may wanna go for a narrow classic buttonhole. This is the same as a classic buttonhole. It just has the stitch width dialed down a little bit. If your machine has a keyhole buttonhole, this can be really great uh, for heavier weight fabrics, things where you're using a shank button and it's most ideal for outerwear like coats or jackets. Some machines also have stretch buttonholes, so it could be really helpful to check your manual to see if your machine offers that setting. This is great when you're working with knit fabrics or if you're working with stretch wovens. If your machine does not have a stretch buttonhole, you might be able to cheat it a little bit by dialing up your stitch length a bit so that your buttonholes have a little bit more natural give to them. And lastly, we have corded buttonholes. Corded buttonholes add a little bit of three-dimensionality to your buttonholes. And this is really great for getting a beautiful kind of couture finish on outerwear projects. Uh, the process of sewing a corded buttonhole is quite similar to using a gimp, but you'll be using a very fine cording instead to give your buttonhole a little bit more oomph and make it stand away from your fabric a bit more. And finally, the thing that you should be doing to make sure that your buttonholes look beautiful and not like garbage is to always, always test them. It's really important to test your buttonholes and you wanna make sure that you're doing a few things. You wanna make sure that you are sewing your test buttonhole in your fashion fabric through the same amount of layers that you'll be sewing your final buttonhole. If you're using stabilizer, make sure your test buttonhole also has stabilizer. You wanna make sure that your sewing machine 
is able to go through all of those layers and you don't need to make any adjustments or use any special tricks to help it along. The other two things you're gonna be checking for is the size of your buttonhole. Cut open that test buttonhole, pass your button through it, make sure that it fits nicely, it isn't too snug, and you're not battling to get the button through. And lastly, you're gonna to wanna to check to make sure that your stitch length and width is appropriate that it's looking nice and clean and binding those edges of your fabric for the best finish. That was awesome, Haley, thanks. You bet. All right, well, if you're ready to practice some buttonholes, we're gonna show you some seam patterns that you can use to sew your own buttonholes. Before you go, there are two things we'd love you to do. First, subscribe, and then head over to seamwork.com where we have over 200 patterns you can download. This really helps us continue to provide free weekly sewing content and more of the videos you love. Before you go, there are two... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tear away stabilizer is like my buttonhole superpower. No, <laughs> secret weapon. It's a secret weapon. <laughs> okay.